All right, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, welcome, welcome to our weekly Wednesday live stream. As I always get started, I'm going to just check the audio to make sure it's working. Hi, right, beautiful. All right, is everyone ready for a stream follow along? Oh man, it has been a crazy last week and I'm very excited to share a lot of things that I have learned, especially about AI arts. I was given an invite to Mid Journey, so we'll talk about that for a little bit. And then we were at Momocon the past week in Atlanta, Georgia. So that was a trip in itself, so we can talk about that. And then of course, we're gonna be doing a hair stream today. So it is a follow along stream. Follow along. It's such a hard uh, set of words for me to say fast. Follow along. <laughs> but we're going to be doing a hair stream today. So if you want to come join me and draw your own interpretation, I'll be sharing everyone's uh, examples at the very end. I have a link in the Discord below. So we will wait about five minutes to start the stream officially. And then we will go ahead and draw our hair together. And I tried to find an image. And I promise I tried to find the source for this, but I could not find the original source. But it's a really good example of hair falling in front of the face, hair being pulled back, a bun, hair being tied into a little braid, uh, hair curling on itself, strands versus shapes. So I think this is a really good example drawing to use for the stream today. And you know what? I'll actually make a little box for it <laughs> on the actual stream itself here. I should have done that before the stream started. But of course, there's always so many things happening in uh, the morning. Uh, specifically, we are actually prepping for one more stream this upcoming weekend. We will not be there, unfortunately, but uh, it is Indie PopCon in Indiana. There we go. So here is the reference we'll be working with. So I am golding a bunch of prints. We are packing for another con. And then Josh, uh, the reason he's not with us today is because he is printing downstairs and then getting a bunch of things ready for tomorrow as well. So we are busy little beavers and we're trying to get everything good because on top of everything, we have two concerts that we're going to, one of them tonight and one on Friday, which is crazy. Uh, tonight we're going to see Sigaros. They're my favorite band ever and they're an Icelandic band that I have been obsessed with for about 10 years. So this will be kind of a dream come true. And then a new uh, artist that I started following, his name's Orville Peck. He is playing on Friday in Milwaukee. So kind of a crazy turn of events. It's like three cons in a row, but you also have two concerts and you also have to fly to one of them. Uh, and of course, streaming alongside everything. And on top of everything, we were given the AI uh, invite. So I'll talk about that. Okay, hello, hello everyone. Hi, Tizzle. Hi, Candor. Two of our wonderful mods from our Discord. Hello, Barbara. Hello, hello. Corinna uh, Halu from Germany. Happy Wednesday to everyone. Hello, hello. Sergio, hello. And then also, if you want to put where you're watching from, it's always, always really cool to see that this is kind of a stream meant for people around the world. And I kind of like that it's smaller, to be honest. Um, being at Momo, it was actually, I had to promote the stream a little bit to some people, and I talked about how I actually like that it's not super big, because then I feel like I can get to know people on more of a uh, first name basis, and get to know like what kind of art they do, and see their growth over time, so it's pretty nice, so I'm pretty excited about that. Oh, and I should mention the drawing that you see here, this I did behind the booth at MomoCon, and it was kind of fun, because as people were walking by, I would try to add any fun trinket or especially if they were wearing anything that had an eye on it I would add it to her design and over the weekend this is what I was able to produce I'll probably just do little finishal or finishal I think I was trying to combine finishing and final finishal touches uh, to the hand and some of the elements in for her dress around here and then maybe like a little fog or like some kind of spiraling uh, effect going on and then I will post it so look for this one either Thursday or Friday I might add even a little gold to it we'll see I'm very excited uh, this kind of like rejuvenated my love of just drawing at cons and kind of integrating what I see into the drawing so that was a fun little experience uh, let's see here hello hello everyone oh yes Candor I know it's so late for you over there I totally understand when you have to go to bed uh, Essie Tai says, hi, hi. 
is this the short hair version of the previous hair tutorial? That will be next week. So this week is kind of the standard hair that's long and then in different uh, variations of how hair can lay on the head. Uh, because last week we were in Atlanta and I had to actually skip a week of streams because of that, sadly. Um, Barbara says, my husband loves Sigaros. Ah, I, I love them. Love, 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 love. Benigri says, hello from Brazil. Hello, hello. And then, yes, if you have any comments or questions, please put at Von Art. So that way, as I'm going in between the hair drawing today and the comment section, which is on this screen here, I will uh, be able to see it much faster. Uh, it looks so dreamy already. Yeah, this was yeah, this was so fun. I really liked working on it, especially after watching Jabaro from Love Death Robots last week. Uh, I love just an absorbent amount of decadence on a character. It, or just maybe not even decadence, just like excess. I like. I feel like I'm an artist who enjoys excess in design. So for me, uh, being able to draw all these like beads and straps and things going across her torso, it was just really fun to create. All right, we'll give it like two more minutes and we'll go ahead and get started on this. So like I said, if you wanna draw alongside me today and do a hair study, uh, the reference is in the Discord link below. It'll be in the channel follow along. Or if you just wanna follow me on screen, it should be right below me. And that is what we'll be working on today. And then you can submit yours at the very end. I won't be giving too much of a critique as much as I will be kind of just showing them off. And uh, that will be our stream today. <laughs> um, I will say, okay, before we get into this, I will say I did get an invite to Mid Journey. So a lot of you are interested in AI generated art right now. And I did two streams kind of talking about them. I do feel like it is taking a lot of shortcuts and I am very mixed on how I feel about it, especially after playing with it. So here is where I'm sitting with it right now. And then I'll, I'll explain to you how Mid Journey even works in uh, a short amount of time. So I feel like I will most likely be using this as like a Pinterest board and I'll be creating my own Pinterest board for inspiration. I will not be painting over any of the images that I create. I don't really like the idea of that being like such a drastic shortcut from the process from starting to finish. And if anything, being at Momo made me realize that AI art will actually make, especially traditional artists, look that much better in contrast. Uh, so I'm gonna stay the course and I'm gonna keep doing things by hand uh, from start to finish. And I think I'm gonna use AI art as like just a fun thing to experiment with to create uh, visually pleasing inspiration boards. Uh, so how does it work exactly? So I'm pretty sure I'm not allowed to show you guys how it works. I think I would be banned from using it ever again, but I'll be pretty descriptive because it's not as complex as people may think it is. So Mid Journey is actually an AI bot on Discord. Believe that or not. Uh, you just get an invite to the Discord server and then you type in, you just type in slash, slash imagine, and uh, you're in like a public chat room as well. So other people can see what you're creating. This isn't like a private uh, chat room that you only you get to see what you create. So there's a little bit of nervousness of, oh, I hope I don't create something really silly or dumb because then people might judge me for it because trust me, that has happened. <laughs> I think I was in the same forum with someone doing, it literally said like <sighs> woman with, cowboy hats and that was the only thing they typed in and I was like really that that's what you want to find but hey I'm not gonna judge too harshly uh, so anyways you go into this discord chat room and I think I was in like number seven and you type in slash imagine and then you type in a sentence that best depicts what you want to see it create so for me I just typed in like fantastical character rendered in MUCA style, surrounded by gold decadent fabric. And basically the more structured you make your sentence, the more accurate, or I guess the more visually representative of what you're trying to create, it will create for you. Uh, so the ones that I posted on Instagram, each of those took about 30 seconds. I wish I could come on here and tell you that AI art is very, uh, hands-on it's a lot of user input and yeah 
there's a taste level that comes into question. If you have a good taste level, people say that it'll help you create better AI art. And I guess yes, but once you kind of figure out the sentence structure, you can kind of just steal what other people are posting because you can see what everyone else is doing and the results they get from those sentence structures. So if you put in like fantasy character in style of Yoshitaka Mano or Norman Rockwell, whatever artist it is, it will generate something pretty close along the lines of those artists. And that's where it's scary on a lot of levels. Uh, but like I said, I'm going to use it as an inspiration board, but people are giving artists way too much credit for what they create on these like Instagram and Twitter and stuff when really it is, it is not that user integrated. It is very much like how clever are you with sentence structuring and the adjectives that you can pull from your mind. So maybe instead of saying pretty, you say decadent, you know? instead of saying her outline, her silhouette. And the more wordy you kind of get with it, and the more with these like luscious words, I think I threw luscious in one of my sentence structures, uh, the better. So keep that in mind if you're wanting to play with this. I still have, am very mixed on how I see AI art, but for whatever reason this weekend at Momocom, I was super calmed by uh, people coming up to my booth and asking me the stories about my drawings and me genuinely authentically being able to respond with you know this was based off of a tree in my backyard that uh, died and I started drawing it as its bark started to shed off and there was like a connection being made between me and the other person and I realized that's something that cannot be replaced I, I was so afraid of people being so enamored with the results of AI art that I almost forgot that people also really can get connected to the story behind the piece. And a lot of times I think people can intuitively feel when a piece feels uh, like it came from the artist genuinely or if they're just making up some story about it afterwards. So. That's where I'm sitting with AI right now. I hope that helped explain Midjourney a little better. I know Tijil wanted uh, a bit more references. I, like I said, I don't think I'm able to actually show it on the stream because I think I'll be banned. Uh, I think it's not allowed. So basically the process that I explained though is it's just that. It's a Discord chat room. You type in a sentence and then the bot shoots something back at you and then you're given buttons under the image and it's basically like, a variation do you want a variation or do you want us to upscale it which basically means like hyper render it more and that's that's mid journey that's AI generated art <laughs> okay so now that we got AI generated art uh, talked about let's talk about actual hand-drawn art because we are gonna be doing a hair study okay so to anyone that wants to join me today let's go ahead and start getting ready here Woo. I'm going to look at the questions here. Uh, do, do. Uh, oh, thank you, Sergio. Says, I'm from Guatemala. I did your hair exercise last week and uploaded to Discord. It was a nice experience and we'll follow along with this one. Well, awesome. Yeah, I'm excited to see what you come up with. Jen says, hello from Denmark, Tim. Drawing on CSP this time to get some practice in, but it will likely be rougher. Hey, that's what practice is for. Uh, a real human from Argentina. Well, hello, real human. Uh, Catalina says, it was nice meeting you at Momocon, Vaughn. I loved your station, too. Well, thank you, Catalina. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed Momocon. I want to come back every year if we get in. Uh, Sita says, Jabara was so beautiful. Alberto Migu Milgo, how do you say his last name? Mielgo is a genius. Uh, yeah, that was phenomenal. Do I recommend Love Death Robots? Not really. It's not usually for me. It's very gory. It's a lot of group finds unknown element dies one by one until final girl is left and i i don't know they're usually not for me they feel very predictable and just a gore fest but jabaro even though it had that element in the very beginning it quickly veered a different direction and i loved it from that point forward basically okay a couple more questions and we gotta get start going here Tijil says, if you want me to quickly jump in and read the comments for you, let me know. My offer always stands. Tijil, you're too kind. Uh, thankfully, I think I can do it today. Like I said, I, 
I'm gonna be very casual with my the hair drawing today. I feel pretty confident in being able to recreate this. <laughs> so thank you as always. Plus I don't want Josh thinking I'm replacing him. <laughs> I'm gonna put my reference right there. Beautiful. Do, do, do. Where was Kendra says, do the same sentences get the same results? No. So every time you put something in, it'll be different because every time it's going through the algorithm to find the images and then compiling them, and it's going to be different every time. Um, hello, Firehide. Hello, hello. Tigel says, did you try in the style of Von Art uh, once? Just to see. It wasn't great. <laughs> but I think it's because I don't have as much on the internet as like Amano or Muka. Or someone told me it's not actually pronounced Muka. It's like Musha or something. I've been saying it wrong this whole time. Okay, let's go ahead and get into it. So, officially, hi everyone, I'm Timothy Von Rieden, better known as Von Art Online, and welcome to this weekly Wednesday live stream. Today we're going to be doing a hair study together, and then we'll show off the results at the end. So with that, if you want to draw alongside me, the image is in the Discord. Uh, link below, and let's go ahead and get it. So when I'm looking at this, I, I normally draw most of my characters, especially their heads and their busts, in like the same relative size on my sketchbook. And since this really isn't focused too much on the proportions of the head and the face, I'm going to just roughly draw them in first, and then I'm going to go for the hair. Now the reason I'm doing this is just to give myself a foundation to lay the hair upon because hair looks a little silly when it's just kind of floating in space. And if some of you have already started drawing, uh, I'm sure you're drawing the head first as well, at least some impression of it. Now the reason I liked this reference so much is because of the different ways that the hair is assembled on the head. It's not just hair blowing in the wind, which yeah, very fun to draw, but I think I like to show the weight and gravity when doing studies as well. And I think there is just a lot to play with here, and uh, that's why we will be doing this today. <laughs> Hello, Casper the cat. You might see a black cat jump up on this table in a couple seconds. We'll see. We'll see what he's thinking. So normally when I do a head, I guess... Let me give some context here. So when I'm doing hair and when I'm drawing someone's uh, head and face, sometimes I'll kind of blind draw it like this, uh, especially if I'm not really caring too much about the overall finesse and detail of the face and the body, then I'll kind of just rough it out like this and maybe I'll add a few more details later. But for the most part, I feel pretty good about being able to blind draw it, which is essentially you're not drawing a lot of guidelines. A lot of those are kind of built into your head while you're drawing this. And that is what I'm kind of doing here. Just kind of looking straight down. Where's my needed eraser? Okay, so let's actually start blocking in some of the hair. So as I mentioned on the previous stream that we were talking about drawing hair, I'm looking at the shapes that the hair creates. Now lately I've actually been more into blocking it out with straight lines. Oh, you know what? Her shoulder goes way further out than I initially thought. And the reason for this is I like then softening those lines later, but I think starting with some harder edge lines can help me block in what I'm seeing better. But this actually kind of comes in more. Oh, I should have also mentioned if 
you kind of want to draw this in your own personal style, that is totally okay. We are not going for hyper-realism today if you don't want to. Uh, I kind of actually am curious to see everyone's different styles, so hopefully you're not too far along that uh, you can't change it at this point. Because I'm sure I'll be adding my little timisms as we move forward here. Um, Jen says, did you see the Yoshitaka Amano Batman art? I did. Uh, I didn't care for it that much, to be frank. Um, but, I mean, I love Amano, so, like, I'm not going to harp on him too much, but I, th I thought I was fine. <laughs> I think knowing it's Amano, I think I wasn't as impressed. If it was, like, some new artist, I'm sure I'd be a little more impressed, but because he's one of my you know, favorite artists and biggest inspirations. I thought I was just fine. I also have a habit of being a little too direct for my own good. And some times that rubs people the wrong way, but I can't hide my genuine feelings about a piece of art or just in general. I think I'm really bad at hiding how I'm feeling. If I don't like something, I'm not going to fake it. I'm not going to pretend I do. Um, Barbara says, I wonder if several people use the same sentence. Will the result always be exactly the same as well? No. So like I was mentioning, it will always be different. It'll probably have like similar threads for sure, but because it pulls randomly every time and it's, it's pulling from millions of images at this point I would assume so it's going to be different every time so you might be able to notice as I'm going through here I'm really kind of just blocking out the larger shapes that I'm seeing and that will help me later on when I start doing the rendering phase. Because here, we're just kind of blocking where everything will go. And I always talk about how art is done in kind of stages or layers, even if you're doing traditional. And at this stage, I'm kind of just giving myself a foundation to work up from. Uh, let's see here. Jen says, I cheat started and now I am a little unsure whether I want to keep drawing because it's the vague, pretty sketch stage. Yeah, you can still change it if you want. You can go for more of like a style, uh, like more of your like stylized look if you have one. So I would say this would be kind of stage one. So this would be like the blocking stage, roughly. So let's keep moving forward now. And like I said, I think I'm going to put my own little style spin on this. Because if you come to my streams often, you'll know that pure realism isn't my favorite anymore. So I kind of like to mix it up. And actually, usually at this point is, I mean, even before this, honestly, if I'm ever working from any kind of reference, and usually it's like a shot of myself, I'll very much stray away from it at this point. I like giving myself a foundation to work upon, but I, I think if you rely too heavily on your reference, it can actually hurt you in the, the long run. Nope, there he is. Hi, Casper. Oh, oh, right in the camera, right? Hey, what? No. 
sir. Nope, nope, nope. Do not bite the cord. Nope. What are you doing? Sir, what are you doing? Hi. Hi. You want to say hi to the people? Hi. He always likes sniffing after I eat, so I had lunch, and he'll always want to smell. Does anyone else's cat do that? Like, they'll actually smell their mouth? He's a very strange boy, I tell you. All right, Gasper, I got to draw. I guess I can hold you with one hand. This will be my new claim to fame, being able to hold a cat in one hand and then draw with the other. <laughs> Sir, what are you doing? <laughs> Isn't that great? Look at the side of his eye. Hi. <laughs> he likes to do this too when I'm away from drawing. He'll like bite my pencils. So then sometimes on a stream I'll pull out a pencil and it looks like I'm just ravenous biting my uh, bottom of my pencil. <laughs> Gasper, can I put you down now? So Normally how I uh, work a drawing as well is I'll work left to right. That way it's easier for me not to smudge and, oh, Casper. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I have to deal with this like while working on the couch. He, he thinks it's always like a game when I'm working with the pencil. And I think the sound of the graphite hitting the paper is enticing to him for some reason. All right, sir, come on. Come on, I'll hold you, but only if you don't bite my pencil. If you keep biting my pencil, I'm gonna have to put you down. Oh, oh, he's asking for it. Sir? <laughs> what, what a strange shot. <laughs> All right, I gotta put you down. Oh my goodness. I can't tell you how many times that happens a day while I'm drawing. It's got to be at least four. So what I'm doing here is I'm kind of blocking in the darker values versus some of the lighter ones. So if we're going back to the hair stream we talked about, gosh, now that was two weeks ago, this is shadow blocking. So this is something I do a lot nowadays when I'm working. And it's not like a dark, dark value that I'm adding in. It's usually just, it's a very light uh, shadow block, but it kind of gives me an idea of where I should heavily put uh, more contrast versus less contrast. And you'll see that eventually I will take this and start using my my Oren's mechanical pencil. And I'll just start really detailing. Here, let me zoom in more. And let that kind of be the highlight of what I'm working on rather than letting it be uh, more realistic. I'll, I'll let areas of the hair really start to shine and other areas become more uh, blank or they might fade into negative space. And for those wondering, we are working for about an hour and a half. So I'll be drawing till 2 p.m. Central Time, so about an hour and a half from now. And then we will show off everyone's work afterwards. And during this entire stream, if you have questions not even on hair or what I'm working on, uh, this is a very open discussion. I am very much open to talk about anything. And uh, I like to hear your guys' thoughts on things. Oh, speaking of anything, uh, at the con, I have had so many people tell me over the years that my work reminds them of Berserk, and I've been so reluctant to uh, try because someone that I used to know really liked it, but 
Um, I kind of have bad associations with it now, but it's been so long that I'm like, you know what? No, no, I'm going to make my own associations now with this. And I started reading Berserk. And it's definitely violent, um, usually more violent than I would be okay with, to be honest. But uh, it has influ- it I already see the kind of footprints and the hand that this series has influenced other things in. And I'm only like five chapters in. Uh, if any of you have played a game called Final Fantasy VII or uh, Dark Souls uh, or seen Spirited Away, there's already three really big references that I feel like came from Berserk. And that's crazy to me, uh, especially that I never fully knew this. So Berserk, the whole idea of like this big sword and a really chunky, thick sword definitely came from Berserk. I mean, maybe there's a different origin, but I personally see this as like the first uh, instance where a fantasy character had this just giant heap of iron. And uh, there is even a pose in like chapter two where that the main character Guts is in and it looks like Cloud Strife. It like almost identical minus the haircut, obviously. And it was like blowing my mind. And then uh, it's very, uh, apparently this is like well known by a lot of From Software uh, fans is, yeah, a lot of the designs of the enemies for sure look like Elden Ring and Dark Soulsy. Uh, they have that very dark, uh, kind of like borderline horror design elements to them. So that was interesting to see, but that one was kind of expected. The thing I wasn't expecting was there is this giant slug creature in gosh, what chapter am I in? It's like three or four. And there is some positions that he is in where it looks like no face when he is larger and he like keeps consuming things. And he even has like the, the face with a double mouth. And then this creature had the double mouth face with like the same weird body shape. Uh, and it, it was like blowing my mind. I was like, did Miyazaki, was he inspired by Berserk when he was doing like no face designs? Uh, so I'm going to I'm gonna keep reading this all the way through. Uh, me and Josh have been very much obsessed with kind of looking at um, books, specifically like visual novels or manga or uh, graphic novels. And he's been reading a lot of Junji Ito, which is like the horror master. And uh, apparently Josh has been loving the one that he's reading. It's not Uzumaki, it's Tomai. And he's been really liking that one, but uh, I've been really liking uh, Berserk almost for like the Easter egg hunt that I'm kind of on now. Like every chapter, I'm like, I wonder what this inspired. I wonder what this inspired. Um, would I recommend it? I don't know because it's so bloody <laughs> and violent. Um, we'll see. We'll see as I get later on. Hi, uh, Gasper. Oh, oh my. Casper, are you kidding? All right, you can sit there for a little while. <laughs> oh my gosh, this cat, you guys, I swear. So then I also might add in some little variation hair strokes here and there. Oh my, now he's knocking pencils off my table. Casper, who do you think you are right now? Who are you? You know what? I'm going to open a window for him so at least he has something else to be distracted by. Come here, my baby. Come here. Cut. Let me open this over here. There we go. That should keep him occupied for quite a while. <laughs> How to distract cats. Open windows. Okay, let's see here. Oh, Josh is here too, yeah. Kendra says, not gonna lie, I prefer direct people as long as they're still polite. I'd rather know what's going on than having to guess what people mean at all times. Um, Maybe I'm missing the conversation of what you guys are talking about. 
Jen says, I cheat started and now I am. Oh, no, I read that one. Are you talking about the AI art stuff? Oh, no, now everyone's just talking about Casper. <laughs> Kandor says, I feel you. Puka tends to start grabbing my arm whenever I give art more attention than her. Yes, I feel like that is, especially even for Josh, Astrid will constantly be fighting for his attention, like just sit in his lap or start like face, I don't know what it's called, face punching, face purring on him. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Guts Iron Sword is an Elden Ring. Is it really? Oh, that's kind of a fun Easter egg. Ilano, sir, this is a Wendy's. <laughs> um, Jen says, Big Sword is a thing rooted in folklore, legend, and history. But, like, is it the, a thick, massive sword? Like, I know the Sword of the Stone, and it has a lot of these, like, long, skinny swords, and maybe a little thicker. But I'm talking, like, like the size of your shoulders, you know, like the width of your shoulders. Maybe maybe I'm just not that familiar with folklore stuff, but it it definitely caught me off guard where I was like, that's Cloud's Buster Sword. This is well, what's going on right now. And it's funny, what who else told me of like, find what your favorite work is derivative of. And it's the whole idea of usually your favorite artist or your favorite work or your favorite game, whatever it might be, it's derivative of whatever their influences were. So I remember someone was mentioning to me if I like um, Amano, I should look up, oh, what's his name? He's the Russian ballet artist. Oh my gosh, I think it starts with a G. Gustov? Hold on, I gotta look this up. Not Gustav. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's gonna bother me. It bothers me more because I have the artist uh, book in the other room. Let me look up one more thing. If not, I'll keep going. Oh, here we go. Basque. B-A-K-S-T. Leon Basque. So I started looking up more of him, and I can definitely see how Amano was inspired by his work and uh, the colors and, like, the floating fabric that are kind of nonsensical. So... Yeah, tip of advice. If you are inspired by someone, try to find out who they're inspired by. I might make these flowers a little bit more um, bigger as well. Uh, Jen says, all right, I think I am done so far. Also, I think Casper wants to do double bodying. <laughs> he He's a little nuisance sometimes, but I love him dearly, so I let him get away with some things. Um, let's see here. Ken, Kendor says, you said you are more of a direct person. Uh, yes, I am definitely very direct. I guess another word would be blunt. I think a lot of people consider me a honest but blunt person. Well, I think it's a, it comes back to I'm really bad at hiding how I'm feeling about something. So if I'm like like upset or if I'm frustrated with someone, I'll let them know and I'll be like, "Hey, this this doesn't seem to be working. Like uh can we can we just hash this out really quick?" Because I'm one of those people, if I don't hash it out, it, like I'll think about it the rest of the day. So I've learned that with uh, my personality, if I can just work it out right away, 
um, I'll feel so much better than moving forward. So now I've just learned to just get it out of the way right away. Okay, I think I'm, well, no, I'll keep working with this pencil for a second and then I'll get into the detailing phase here. Um, Kendor says, also, unfortunately, it's past my bedtime, so I gotta head out. I will draw the second, or I will draw the rather quick sketch I got so far in the Discord. I hope to get to see the rest of the stream as a VOD. Yes, I will definitely post the rest on uh, YouTube. Uh, have fun, everyone, and good luck with Casper. Well, th <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah, hopefully he'll be a little better behaved here, but knowing the cat, probably not. Kind of like this one strand of hair that just comes in front of kind of the rest of the hair in general. I might play with that later and I'll use my eraser to kind of highlight that. And the wispy hair is always pretty fun. I might give the skin just a very, not even that dark, honestly, like a very subtle value to try to differentiate it from the background. So sometimes I'll turn the pencil sideways and I can only do this with like a really light pencil. So. I'll, this is a 2H. So you can see how it just is dark enough to distinguish it from the background uh, paper texture, but it's still so light that pretty much any value placed on top of it will still read darker. All right, but I'm gonna switch over to my, uh, this is an O-Renz mechanical pencil, it's a 0.2, and you can see some of the Casper bite marks because he gets under my pencils when I'm not around. Like I said, I'm not going for hyperrealism, so I'm going to give some of these edges more of a defined edge. So I'm curious to see how the rest of you interpret the hair here that are following along with me. And also kind of what final style it's rendered in. So normally when I'm going through on this phase, I try to be a little slower, a little more methodical about how I'm doing it. Let me just bring the camera lower here for you guys. Uh, Jen says, what if Samara used flower crowns? Uh, this would be Oh my god, are you talking about Samara from The Ring? <laughs> well, it'd be funny, I mean, obviously I can't show it live, but it would be funny to type that sentence into Midjourney, the AI generator, and see what kind of art it creates. I mean, I do see people type in a lot of, you know, like, what if Star Wars was horror, and then the results are either really funny or just really bad. Like your nostrils are actually further up on the nose. I'm gonna try not to spend too much time on the facial features. It's very easy for me to get lost in facial features because I just like drawing um, people so much. So I gotta remind myself this is a hair stream first and more foam along. First and foremost, there we go.
bigger eye is a little further up than I initially put it. And anytime I go super quiet on a stream, it's because I'm concentrating. I feel like especially when I'm drawing faces, I tend to like hyper focus for that second. Because this is stylized, I can kind of push and pull some of the lines to fit what I'm going for here. I might minimize the amount of lines going on her face here, but we'll see. I'm gonna give it just a little bit of shading. Sometimes my style can read a little bit too line art and that's where I want to just add a bit more contrast for a bit more texture um, Sergio says I love video games and I played Final Fantasy 7 remake and it honestly blew my mind all the lore the characters and everything it's superb the feeling you can see the ceiling made by machines moi uh, I yes I agree I think Final Fantasy 7 remake is better than people give it credit for uh, I think some of the story elements especially the ones they added with the the mentor looking things I wasn't crazy about that to be honest I, I do think the gameplay, though, is some of the best gameplay in, like, a RPG game that I think I've ever played. Uh, I think it's very, very good. I, I think the way that you can switch between the characters and the way that they have it set up, it's just, it's very fun, it's very engaging, and I'm, I was constantly switching between the four characters that you can play as, and I didn't feel like I would get bored with one when I would switch to them. So... I feel like that's a an achievement in and of itself. I'm gonna add more value here. Sometimes the mechanical pencil, even though I love it, it can be a bit slow because I have to work with it so delicately. Sometimes if I just want a good push of values, I'll just pull out this pencil and give it that push that I'm, I'm looking for. Um, Catalina says, I'm confused, so mid-journey art can't be shared. Aren't there accounts that share the art? I Yes, I believe you can definitely share it on like social media and stuff, but I don't think I can share like me showing you guys how it works uh, because then I have to be showing the public Discord, which I think might be against the rules. Or it's not, sorry, not a public Discord. It's a private Discord because technically you have to be invited to it.
give just a little bit of the rendering on the shoulder so it doesn't feel as lifeless. I mean, I feel like I, I can't be complaining about video games right now at all. I know uh, I've been watching this one game reviewer. And he, I mean, I do agree with a lot of points he makes about how the industry does not value like middleware games anymore. So like games that are, aren't big budget, but they're not indie as well. And he believes that it's like a dying breed. And I kind of agree with him. But I feel like games lately have been, or at least the ones I've been playing, have been pretty nice. Uh, I thought Elden Ring despite getting super frustrated near the end. I mean, it's fun, phenomenal. You know, I think moving forward, I think that will be the game that will be referenced a lot. Similar to how Breath of the Wild, like everyone was calling games like Breath of the Wild uh, in their marketing. I think you're gonna see a lot of games now start using like Elden Ring in their, their marketing tactics. Actually might make the hair a bit darker than I was originally intending because the reference has such a dark contrast in the hair above the face and initially I wasn't going to replicate that but I kind of like it now Digital says, what if we, the viewers, suggest a sentence? You don't show how you enter it into mid-journey, but you show us the result? I think that's allowed. Yeah, I could do that. Actually, if you want to, we could make that the start of next week's stream where you guys submit a bunch of uh, questions because that was the other thing I found out about mid-journey is you only have a certain amount of times you can play with it before you have to start paying for it. Uh, a pay-to-play type scenario but i will be paying for it like i said i like the idea of using it as a pinterest board inspiration thing uh and i as much as i have weird thoughts about it like i can't prevent the future from happening and art's gonna head in this direction whether or not i agree with the way that artists are going to be using it because i've come to accept that no matter what happens, there will always be people that are looking to abuse the, the new technology that comes out. And in this case, I think we'll see a lot more artists that are going to be using it and uh, crediting it as their own. And especially at conventions, I think I'm going to start seeing more AI generated boots pop up. And it may not be like pure AI art. A lot of people might just paint over it. But honestly, the amount of work that you have put into the AI drawing is like minimal. So it will not surprise me uh, if I start seeing a lot of those start popping up at shows. I think my the big concern I had, and I think it will happen regardless, uh, will a lot of concept artists will, will lose their jobs for sure. I think a lot of these big companies, rather than hiring like 20 concept artists for an environment, they might just hire three and then give them all a mid-journey access key. And I know how crazy that sounds, but I, I truly believe that will happen in the next uh, year or two. If it's not already happening, to be completely honest with you guys. I wouldn't be surprised if a Blizzard or um, some of these more bigger AAA companies uh, come across, it, especially like Disney. I'm sure once they get their hands on it, a lot of people will lose their jobs. Hopefully not. I could just be predicting this dystopian future. Um, maybe I've watched too much Black Mirror, but that is definitely what I believe is going to happen, at least in the art industry. I do think there will always be a want for narrative-driven work that is from a specific artist. And I think maybe that's why I'm not freaking out as much. Uh, I could be wrong on this too, but... 
being at MomoCon, it really did help me feel more secure about uh, the direction of art and not have to worry about my own direction and having to like change that or take on a bunch of client work that I really don't want to. So hopefully that will give you guys some peace, hopefully. Um, I know there's a lot of artists, I, I did a big thread on my Instagram that people were commenting on and uh, some artists that I even really like, like Jeff Simpson and uh, like it, it, their concerns are very valid because I think their style has a similar look to a lot of the AI art stuff. And I think a lot of people will start confusing his work for AI. And I, that would be devastating. I think that would be devastating if people started to look at my work and just assume that I did it with AI. So I feel like his concern about AI is not only valid, but very threatening. And I feel for those artists. And I don't know what to tell them. You know, I, I genuinely do think that actually is pretty sucky. And I don't know where that's going to take them. Um, Digital says, I'll start. I suggest elo eloquent giraffe lady sipping wine on a summer's day. Um, I mean, honestly, you'll probably get some pretty funny results. That's kind of the fun. To me, that's the joy of Mid Journey is like putting in something really silly like that and just seeing what it tries to create from it. So if anything, we can get some good humor and laughs out of this AI art movement. Um, Jen says, ever get asked unreasonable things by your family in relation to art? My mom asked me to draw a puffin for her birthday even though I have never drawn birds. Oh my gosh, yes. Um, I love my family so much. They're such a great family in my extended family. And one of my cousins asked me to draw a swan wearing a crown in watercolor. <laughs> and I'm like, I've never even, I never do watercolor. Um, in a way though, I kind of see it as like a challenge. And I'm like, well, okay, here we go. But uh, I do have another cousin on my mom's side that she really wanted me to make up a logo design and I, I was trying my best to do it for them but after a while I had to tell them I was like I just don't think I'm good for this job I'm so sorry I wanted to help you but I, I think a lot of times people assume if you're an artist it means you you can just do everything you can do graphic design you can do sci-fi concept art you can do oil painting of uh, Swan Lake it I, I do think people just kind of lump it together and to be fair my brother's a carpenter and I sometimes lump that kind of stuff together with him. I'm like, well, he's a carpenter. I'm sure he can fix this refrigerator, you know. Uh, so I kind of get it because I feel like I do that sometimes to um, other people with their careers. So I can't even judge too harshly, you know. But yes, that does happen quite a bit. Uh, Jen says, or I keep getting asked to paint my grandfather's old toy horse. Like, sure, let me pull up the 10 years of drawing tree figures that I never acquired. Uh, yeah, I feel like, the, yeah, you're going to get lumped into drawing a lot of things that you're not used to drawing just by the nature of what we do, unfortunately. You know, originally this was going to be more stylized, but I feel like I am teetering on the edge of this being more hyper realistic if I keep doing this soft edge brush or soft edge uh, rendering style I mean oh my gosh I got digital on the brain um, Jen says part of my gripping is that it feels like they don't care enough to know what I do and just make me ask or and just make ask me to do things with art for a purpose when I do it to relax, taking away the fun. Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, I wish there was a little bit more of an understanding of what we do or like, I, I don't know though. Like I, I can't expect everyone to understand what I do on a day to day. Like I don't even think my parents fully quite get what I do on a day to day. Uh, <laughs> I think sometimes they're even a little confused. I mean, they get that I'm, drawing but it's a very like vague sense of whatever that means uh i'm sure they tell their friends i mean at one point when i was in college um or like right after college my parents would tell people i do things quote unquote like shrek <laughs> i was like 
I don't know if you're trying to drag me right now. I don't know if I did something to upset you, but why is that the reference that you guys are pulling from when you tell people? So one time I caught them doing it to someone when I was there. And I was like, do you hate me today? Um, but I was like, mom, what the heck are you talking about? She's like, you know, like Shrek, like the 3D, like the, the movie. And I'm like, mom, I know what Shrek is, but why are you telling people I do Shrek? She's like, do you not do Shrek? I'm like, no, I don't do Shrek. <laughs> ah. Anyways, thankfully, I've just t told her to tell people I draw. I, I told her not to give any specific references anymore. <laughs> that way I don't have this weird uh, gossip going around that I'm drawing Shrek. Although I hear a Shrek remake is in the works right now. Maybe I should apply to be a concept artist, considering I was doing Shrek 10 years ago. <laughs> Anyways, Fidgety says, From what I understand, AI art will pose a problem to use purely as art, since it cannot be copyrighted in the U.S., so it never belongs to the person who generates it in any legal way. Yes, yeah, so that's the other weird part about mid-journey, is it says in the rules before you use it um, that you can't claim it as your own. But what I'm thinking is a lot of people are just going to use it as the basis or the foundation of what they're drawing and then then claim it as their own after. It. Maybe I'm wrong. I mean, maybe it's like my lack of confidence in modern artists nowadays, but I feel like people are always looking for shortcuts, and I feel like this is the shortcut of all shortcuts. So I think it'll be spammed and abused, and I think you're going to see a lot more of it on your timeline before we see a lot less of it. But I'm going to give this a little more style. I feel like I went a little too heavy trying to make it more realistic. Um, Elena says, my brother asked me to draw a hyper-realistic piece of a watch. And I just straight up asked him what gave him the impression I could pull that off. He was surprised that I could not. Um, I'm sure you could. I believe like half of drawing is just believing that you can draw it. But that is a very strange, specific request. I think I would be more curious of like why like what what do you want a drawing of a watch if anything nowadays I mean this is what I'm talking about you could literally take a hyper photorealistic watch and throw some snapchat filter over it and just tell them that you draw it or you drew it and you might be able to get away with it I actually have one of my friends um not a close friend but Apparently, they're going to just be taking on project work where they feel like they could just take these filters and AI renders and then just call it their own, maybe do a little painting over on top afterwards and then sending it to them and getting the paycheck. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> it feels bad. Uh, it feels like trickery. Um, and since I always judge things on authenticity... It just does not feel authentic at all. Um, I don't feel great about it. But I'm not going to tell someone what they can or can't do. I just know for me personally, I cannot do that myself and feel good about it. Uh, Tishel says, I feel like the family asking for a random arty thing is a common artist problem. I get that a lot too. Yeah, I... I I don't know anyone that hasn't gotten that from their family when I talk to them. I feel like it's a pretty common thread amongst all of us. Um, Jen says, I think it might enhance or cheapen depending on the process and artist, the concept art process. Yes. Um, I... I don't know what direction art and all entertainment is going in right now. I think we've known for a while that it feels like it's very much just for money reasons. And a lot of reboots or sequels or anything of that kind of just banks on nostalgia and um, 
a lot of millennials reliving their childhood icons out, so it doesn't feel authentic most of the time. I think that's why I like Disney remakes feel the, the worst to me out of probably all of them. It's because they never feel like it's an intention to like deliver a product that is substantial quality. It feels like they're just trying to make money while they can. Um, and it's part of the reason why I refuse to watch them nowadays. Uh, so I'm sorry if anyone in the chat likes the Disney remakes and I'm kind of smack talking them, but I believe if you don't enjoy like the current trend of the market, you cannot be supporting it with your money because then it's giving the opposite impression to the people making these movies. So that's why I haven't seen a Marvel movie in like four or five years. I haven't seen um a disney remake in quite a while i feel like i always get tricked into watching them though at like friend's house I remember we were at one of my friends uh andrew and he got the lion king remake and everyone wanted to watch it so i was there so i was forced to watch this and oh boy was that one of the worst movies i've ever seen and it's even more weird because they had the foundation of such a good movie with the animated one so once again, sorry if anyone likes 2019 Lion King, but I think it is quite terrible. Yeah, so now I'm going to add in all my little timisms and edge out some of the lines and give it some style and then probably add a little bit of a darker value. Uh, I guess we still have quite a lot of time though, so I guess I can really kind of render this one out. I didn't realize how fast I would be with this. Especially when I don't have uh, Josh helping moderate. I'm always like, well, um, if I'm a little slower today, that's fine. But I ha weirdly, I'm having the opposite problem where I'm like, oh, actually, I'm moving at a decent pace here. I definitely do feel like I made this too low, but I actually don't mind the result. Oh, let's see here. Elena says, my brother is very focused on self-image and having expensive things. He wants me to draw an expensive watch he wants to get. Uh, ooh, terrible reason. Then I would say no. Uh, don't do it for him then. <laughs> I feel like it's borderline enabling um, bad behavior. If you want an expensive watch for self-image reasons, there's a deeper route to that. And I, I actually, I'm kind of sad to hear that for you, uh, especially that being your, your actual brother. I know if my brother was telling me he needed a watch for his self-image, I'd be like, no, I think you need therapy. I think you need to like evaluate why you think a physical possession will enhance your quality of life. I feel like that's a lot of the conversation I'm having with a lot of my friends lately. That feels like, I don't know how I got put in this position of being the mediator, but I don't know if it's because I have this objective sense of reason sometimes, or maybe people want more of a objective answer, even if they don't agree with me. I think people just, they want something to um, compare, contrast their own thoughts on. Yeah, and I feel pretty good about having an opinion on the things that I'm familiar with, especially in the art world. So even if people don't agree with me, like my one of my best friends, Alex Dos Diaz, him and I disagree on a lot of things. Uh, well, thank you for whoever does subscribe. I'm so sorry, I have the, what is it? Rinku, thank you. And... I think it's actually good to have uh, and be surrounded by a lot of people that aren't just yes people. I, I think that can actually drive you to have a weird ego. And then in the end, you have a bunch of these followers that are borderline scared of you. Uh, and I know one of my, I'm not going to say who, but she basically created this army of people that just say yes to her and they're too afraid to speak up. And it's very strange. I don't know, I guess it's a weird 
form of like validation and I, I don't know. I think piece of advice, surround yourself with people that will disagree with you on um, stances and they're not just going to agree with everything that you say. And it helps you grow as a person too. If you're not able to be called out for your stuff, then how are you going to grow from it? And I think a lot of these people, especially like the one I'm mentioning, uh, they just get stuck in this loop where they think they're always right because no one's ever telling them they're not, you know? And then they get these weird bloated egos and... <laughs> Then once like a normal person talks to them and it's like, where are you getting these ideas from? Like, it's very bizarre. Anyways, uh, Jen says, reality of the matter is that you can draw anything if you are given enough time, can't get bored, don't have responsibilities and have no life. Um, I think, I mean, yes, I think you could draw anything regardless, uh, like, if I was told to draw a sci-fi spaceship scene, obviously, sci-fi is not my thing, and hard surface is very difficult for me to render, but I think if I put enough time and effort into it, I could do it. Doesn't mean I want to do it, but I think I could. Um, back when I was teaching at CG Cookie, I did this workshop called I Can Draw Anything, and the premise was, I didn't realize it was going to become basically a self-confidence workshop because most of the people that took it didn't really need me to teach them how to draw necessarily. They just needed someone to say, you're on the right path. They're like, yes, you can do this. And I realized that a lot of artists just need that. They don't want you to teach them how to render hair um, specifically. They don't want you to teach you or teach them the foundations and principles of what makes a good lighting scenario. Sometimes all artists need is just the acknowledgement that they're they're doing well. Um, I, this kind of sounds sad, but that's what I learned because most of the people in the workshop, when I would have the direct one-on-ones with them, we would rarely talk about the art itself when I would ask them if they have any questions. And a lot of it would be, you know, how do you get better at public speaking? How do you post your stuff online without the fear of the backlash or something? And then that's when it really hit me. I was like, I think artists are just very nervous. Um, Because most of what you can learn, you can just Google and there'll be a YouTube video or something on it. Uh, Well, thank you, Tijel. Well, thank you, Tijel. What a well-spent dollar. (laughs) Um, Yeah, for any of you who may also want to use the beautiful AI voice, I still have yet to name her. Um, There is a link below where you can donate. I always forget to mention that she's here on these streams. Probably subconsciously because I'm like, I hope no one uses her. But I should be promoting her more considering that's like a revenue generator. But anyways, uh, let's see here. Fidgety says, I completely agree. I'm very cynical about how people will use it. Uh, Social media has made a sense of constant creative output being normal when it isn't. It will be spammed, already not a fan. Yeah, I think that's where my initial shock and kind of sadness came from, is being like, great, yet another thing that we have to battle as artists. And this is something I had to tell... Uh, Jeff as well because he was getting really nervous and like I said very justified very very much so especially with the look of his stuff but you really do have to remember like why we do art in the first place and obviously a lot of us make careers out of it so I don't want to downplay that either but the reason why I think I've felt better about doing art even amongst the age of commercialism that we're currently in is because I genuinely love drawing Like, I don't think I could think of another activity I would rather be doing more on my day-to-day. So I try to tap into, like, my childhood sense of wonder and awe of drawing. And once I start getting into that zone where things are just flowing and you're having a good time with the work, that to me can never be replaced. And I do think a lot of times people can sense when the artist is really putting themselves in the work uh, versus when they're just kind of pumping out product. Uh, and that's something that me and my friends talk a lot 
nowadays are a lot of these big name artists they're not really artists anymore as they're just like content producers and you know sometimes we feel like we have to also be content producers so we're you know battling the algorithm we're punching out a bunch of things we're learning how to make reels and on top of everything we also have the rise of nfts which were uh, quite the battle and it really separated a lot of the art world and it became really ugly and uh, the art world had a little bit of drama before that to begin with and then obviously 2020 was you know happened and that was horrible and then now we got AI art. So in the span of like three years, we've just had a lot of weird things specifically in our industry that has just not been the most fun to deal with, we'll say. And I think that's why AI art just feels like another blow, like another kick while we're already down uh, as a community. So I, I get where you're coming from with this. After using it, I see how it could be a really cool inspiration tool. Um, if used in the right hands. But even as I say that, I know a lot of people are going to abuse it, and I know a lot of people are going to claim art that's not actually theirs as their own. And I think I just had to accept that, that whenever there's advance, whenever there's advance is with technology, if it contributes to the art world, there will always be people that want to abuse it almost like immediately. And yeah, that sucks, and that's something that we can't prevent, but if you can still look at your art and feel good about your process and how you treat it and still have that joy of drawing that hopefully, you know, you had when you were a kid, I mean, that's what should really matter. Uh, at least that's where I'm at right now. <laughs> Obviously, I've just started to have this conversation with myself and with my friends and trying to figure out, like, how do, how does this make us feel? And Let's talk about it. Um, so yeah, I, I hope that helps because I know it is kind of a scary time to be an artist and I think it feels like the competition is so overwhelming right now that why even get started or why should I even try when not only is it hard enough competing against artists that are, you know, have been skilled and uh, can do this for and has been for years, but now I'm also literally competing against AI as well. So yeah, it's frustrating. I get it. Um, let's see here. Where was I? Samantha. Oh, it jumped. Wait, there we go. Samantha says, how do you feel about artists with multiple styles? I juggle between realism styles and simple cute digital illustrations. I'm sure my Instagram is confusing. Should I stick to one style? Uh, it depends on what your goal is. If your goal is to have fun and you love drawing, then no, absolutely not. Do as many styles as you want. If you're goal is purely growth yes i would definitely stick to one style i think social media specifically trains people to follow you for a specific look to your work i think people will expect you to have a uh, consistency with your style and it might feel kind of trapped and uh limiting and that's because it is <laughs> I, I don't know how to word it any better, but uh, I do feel like social media trains us to find a style that is somewhat unique and then spam that as much as possible, which is not exactly my favorite way to describe art, obviously. So I would say find a style that you genuinely have fun working in, and if it ends up being consistent over years, fine. It if, if it just so happens to help you with the algorithm, even better. But I will say, if you're specifically looking for growth, yes, I would definitely say having consistency with your style is important. Uh, Elena says, for me, my trouble with my brother is that his thoughts on material value and projecting a specific image is so contrasting to my own view on things, but I hope he'll notice it himself one day. Yes, I hope that for you as well, because that sounds miserable. Uh, if I had to project how I felt about myself based on the wrist accessory I was wearing, I would definitely say I have more going on than uh, needing a watch. <laughs> um, I don't, I, I'm trying not to sound mean either. I think it's because I, I feel this with some of my own friends and I, I, I want them to get out of that as well because I care about them and I don't want to see them going down that path.
Let's see here. Jen says, yes men or psycho fans? What are, or psycho fans? What are those? I actually don't know what that is. Uh, Jen says, were you already competing against, you were already competing against AI, just the algorithm? That's a good point. And let me tell you, that algorithm is a brutal. I couldn't even imagine being a new artist on the scene right now. So if any of you are watching that are either younger or maybe you're just starting to get into the art scene, I feel for you. I could not imagine what that must feel like, that pressure, uh, especially with how daunting it is nowadays. Because not only are you trying to just make art, like the the sole reason we're trying to even post is to, like, we're making art, but now we have to find and figure out the best way in which to just submit our art. And then that could also mean we now have to change the way we make art, whether that's filming ourselves periodically while we're doing it, uh, or like kind of like what I'm doing right now, doing it live, because live is usually pretty good for statistics. Um, but on the flip side, though, you also need your live to do well. Uh, like my, my YouTube stats actually does pretty well based on the... Um, the amount of people that come to these streams and then based on the viewer outload. So I I feel like I kind of got lucky with YouTube because I started like a long time ago. And even though it's a smaller, these are usually smaller streams, I try not to promote them too much on like Instagram and Twitter and stuff because I like them being a little smaller. But then posting them afterwards is where you get the, the real good numbers to help the algorithm push, at least for YouTube. So I... I could not imagine starting as an artist now. I mean, back then for me, it was like deviant art mostly, and you would just post your art, and then you would wait to get comments, but you'd wait like a day. Uh, and now it's like the first hour, or at least there was a time with Instagram where it was like the first hour meant so much. So you would have to sit there with your phone and then answer and like every comment that would come through. And that was... It just felt like a game, like a very strange game. It's weird how much art has molded itself to kind of fit the times. And even saying all this out loud, it's like, it's very, it's just very weird. It's very weird. Anyways, I'm rambling. Um, how much time do we have left? We have about 30 minutes, which seems crazy because I'm like, what am I going to do for 30 minutes? I guess I'll just keep pushing this. I do, I, I gotta make this more stylized though. I, I push for too much realism on different areas of this. I feel like I wanna push more of a style. Plus I made her eye way too high up. Yeah, her eye is definitely lower. Uh, let's see here. Sergio says, I have to fight against myself to draw something, but now I feel like I have to fight against the digital world. Yeah. Uh, you're not wrong. Uh, and I think it's only going to get worse. Like if I'm being totally honest here, I don't see it getting easier for artists moving forward. And I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means for the community and... Um, for like those wanting to go to art school and I can't even imagine what art school is going to look like in like 10 years. Imagine going to an atelier that's like oil paint based and they're like also teaching how to use mid journey. You know what I mean? Like I don't know what the future of art's going to look like. I mean I know for me I'm going to try to stick to like this kind of stuff. But I was very tempted to do more digital next year to begin with, but now I'm like, I feel like I'm getting that push to stay more traditional. Because in a very strange way, I feel like my art's gonna stand out more in the coming years by staying traditional. But I also wanna stay true to my like instincts. So we'll see how I'm feeling by the end of the year. I was gonna kinda give this year like my big push for like staying strictly traditional and then next year do like both so we'll see i still probably will end up doing both but 
it's a weird position to be in right now. And I'm sure a lot of you guys feel that way too, especially if you're a traditional artist, maybe you're thinking, should I just be hopping on the digital train at this point? I mean, I know that's something some of my friends have thought. I'm not going to say their names, but yeah, a lot of my friends are thinking, should I be integrating this into my process? Um, I already know someone that not only, I mean, like I said, I'm not a fan of NFTs, but I know one of my friends not only did a AI art piece, but then he painted over it uh, and then sold it as an NFT, and it sold for quite a lot of money. And I don't know how I feel about that. I can tell you my initial reaction is not great. <laughs> but like, I can't even do anything about it. Like, that's the direction the art world's heading in. And I think the only thing we can do is just fight for our space to exist the way that we do art now. Or at least the way that I want to do art. I'm going to fight for this, you know. It's, it's weird. I feel like I've been pushed into this position uh, to be kind of a, a leader for younger artists that also want to do traditional work and maybe also want to do this style of um, not relying so heavily on tools and digital assets or whatever. And I feel like it just kind of fell into my lap. Like I didn't, I didn't apply for this job, but here we are. And I think I'm going to keep speaking up for it. And I think a lot of people are curious about it. I don't think everyone wants to just accept it right away. Uh, maybe it's maybe I'm being too stubborn. Who knows? Maybe I'm the one that's actually at fault here. Uh, it doesn't feel like I am, but um, we'll see. I feel like I can be an open-minded person when it comes to adapting if someone can give me a an argument or a a platform or like a, a speaking piece that actually makes sense to me. And right now, everything that I've heard from people doesn't sound great. I, I don't think it's convincing me that much. But like I said, I guess you, you I don't think you should be surrounded by yes people anyway, so maybe it's good that I'm surrounded by people that also like the direction of AI art and uh, I should have discussions with them. I really should bring on one of them to these streams and have it live. I think good, healthy discourse is missing in our society, especially in America. And I would love to have uh, someone that actually like likes AI art and will talk about how they'll integrate it uh, on one of these streams. Yeah, oh my gosh, we still have like 20 more minutes. And I feel like I'm just I'm now like rendering to death here. Uh, let's see here. Jen says, psychophants is pronounced like sicko in the end of elephant. So sycophant, it is a person who is a yes man just to advance themselves as long as you can do things for them or give them privileges. Oh, yeah. Um, the, the person I was talking about earlier, they definitely have a lot of sickle fans. And the only time that they, I think, will acknowledge these people is if they still feel like they're above them, like they're better. So they'll, they're will they okay. But as soon as the people, or these sickle fans become, we'll say, gain more followers or something than the original person, then they'll start going crazy and making up rumors about them and tell them that they're doing everything wrong because they're losing their position of power. That's why I don't think it's good to have or to be surrounded by yes people because I think then as soon as you're challenged, you don't know how to react and you start attacking wildly and like lashing out. It's like a child throwing a tantrum. Uh, digital says you said earlier i have digital on the brain does this mean you're continuing the sword illustration how's that going uh sword illustration <laughs> which sword sword illustration you might have to remind me on which one i've drawn a lot of swords in the last couple years 
I know for sure I'm doing color on one of my new drawings. Uh, it is of Chase lying in a field. I'm going to draw everything around him uh, black and white, so in grayscale, and then he himself will be in color. Actually, I think I have it here. So here we are. This is what I've been working on um, when I'm not crazy packing for cons. Let me get the zoom out here. There we go. So basically, everything around him I'll keep in grayscale uh, once I finish all the foliage and the leaves. But then once I finish, I'll scan it and then I'll just paint him in his uh, wardrobe. And it's kind of the idea of he's slowly losing his vision. So I like the idea he's surrounded by this lush foliage and uh, he can't see it. Uh, and I like the idea of he himself is in color. Uh, and I, I'm trying to play with the contrast of like different meanings and the metaphors within that. But I like the idea of just him being in color and letting the viewer kind of interpret it however they will. Uh, oh, way zoomed out. There we go. So now I'm at the point where this is where I'm going to get a little more fantastical with this drawing. So I like the negative space behind the hair. And I do this a lot in my drawings, but I'm going to, I think I'm going to just really play that up. So I'm going to add even more contrast. Um, doo -doo -doo. Tigel says, I don't know why, but this sounds like pooey. Ha ha ha. You don't have to confirm. Um, no, no, it's not pooey. Pooey, I love pooey. He is a very busy worker. Um, he has a lot of people working under him, yes, but he's also very open to criticism and change. Um, the person I'm talking about, I can't, I obviously can't say their name, but um, they are not a he, we'll just say. And I'll leave it at that because I am not a gossiper anymore. <laughs> Um, Tishel says, sword. oh, my OC sword play, yes. Um, yes, I will plan on continuing that again. Yeah, the last one I did was Grizzy. And actually the one here, I know it's probably pretty blurry for you guys, but this is the original Chase illustration I did years ago. And there's something about digital that I'll, I always love. And I, I taught it for seven years, so obviously I have some connection to it. I just think I fell in love with pencils more, especially since I kind of grew up with pencils and it has that tactile feeling that I can't quite reproduce digitally. But it's weird now with AI art and a lot of the focus going that direction, it's like why even go back into digital when I think I can have more of a uh, contrast to what is in the art world by just sticking with pencils. And since I still love working with pencils, I don't really see a problem with it. I think the problem would be is if I wanted to work digital like in my heart of hearts, but I felt I was forced to stick with pencils. But thankfully that's not the case. I actually like pencil drawing quite a lot, so I do not mind. But I also don't think you should be constrained based on culture. So for me, if I really want to do purely digital, then I should move that direction. I think as an artist, you really have to follow your intuition. And if you aren't, you're kind of fighting yourself. And I think in the long run, that actually will hurt you. Actually, yeah, I, I kind of like the direction this drawing took. It like was a little too realistic for a bit, but now that I'm kind of playing with some of these contrast edges in this negative space, I'm having more fun with the result. Maybe that lay that a little lighter now. Um, Digital says, no, 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 I meant Pui as in the one who sold the reworked AI art piece, not the other person you're talking about. Pui is super sweet. I would never assume Pui was the other person. Yeah, no. Pui, I mean, he can get very much trapped into his work, and he's a very busy boy, but uh, thankfully he's got a good head on his shoulders now. 
and he's doing very well. Uh, he's got like a team of like 17 people helping him at cons and traveling to different countries, or not different, well, maybe different countries, I don't know yet. Uh, but I know definitely around the America, he's sending his team out and he has like different divisions. Uh, Erica says, I'm full team traditional. However, I use digital to make my traditional work easier, i.e. making my reference digitally, doing my color count, but the finish is traditional. I think that's how a lot of people have been using digital. And I, I have to remind myself that that was a big fear back in the day when digital started becoming popular, that it would totally kill the market for traditional artists. But that didn't happen. And if anything, now oil painters are seen as like these this godly tier of artists. Um, when I go to shows and if someone claims that they're an oil painting or oil painter, they definitely seem to be in a league of their own uh, compared to a lot of the other artists there. All right, I think for the last, what we got, like 10, 15 minutes, I'm just going to noodle around. I'm going to sharpen some edges. I'm going to highlight different areas and then we'll see what everyone else did so yeah if you followed along with me we got like 10 more minutes and then if you could quickly either take a photo or copy uh, or not copy if you could uh, save it out if you're working digitally and then we'll see what your guys' results look like Oh, well, thank you, Lazy Fox, for subscribing. I'm going to do one pass, I think, two on the skin to just try to make it more consistent. I guess her shoulder on this side is very, very light. I almost made it a bit too dark with my initial pass. I don't know if I want it to fade into a nothing line, though. I know the reference, it kind of fades into the background, but I think I'm going to separate it. Maybe some edging out on the this kind of half braid here. Yeah, I kind of like that look. Uh, let's do. Erica says. I am so jazzed that you're going to be at AluxCon in October. I can't wait to see your work up close in person for the first time. Uh, yeah, I'm very excited about AluxCon. Horrible timing, though. I hate doing cons in October just because I also co-host Drawltober, and I want to make sure that I do a good job with not only hosting it, but then my own submissions. And the only reason why it's so difficult is because we might have three conventions that month, and like cons are definitely a big uh, time sink and energy sink. So we'll see how that goes. But either way, I'm very excited to go. It's very close to where my good friend Alex that I was mentioning earlier, Dos Dias, he lives. So I'll be able to hang out with a lot of them and we'll, we'll have a good time. I think my other friend Babs, Babs Webb on Instagram is going. And I think one of the days we want to dress up really fancy and have kind of a fun night of it. So I got to find like a gold suit or something that would be kind of uh, fun to wear while we're there. Let me pull some of the, I like the highlight of that strand. See how you can take your eraser tool and just give that illusion that the hair is going all the way through. Sometimes I use 
this eraser, I'll do like a hard erase on the side and it creates that nice flat edge. And then I'll go through Especially if my lines I feel are getting too, for lack of a better word, liney, uh, I'll take my eraser and I'll pull them back quite a bit. Because then if you ever need to, you can go back in and kind of clean them up. Like that. So I feel like I added this line here and it's making this feel really inconsistent. Sometimes I'll take the kneaded eraser and I'll just kind of dab up the value. Okay, we got four minutes left, so if you're working alongside me, this is kind of your last call. Get in all, any detail that you want, especially if you want it to be seen on the stream results. I'll start pulling my Cintiq up, get that going. And then next week, I think we'll do a short hair study. We'll probably do three different ones because I mean, even doing an hour and a half of this seems lengthy. <laughs> I feel like this probably didn't even take you guys uh, that long. Uh, and maybe you're more like me right now. We're just kind of tinkering with it. So we'll probably do three short hair examples. And that way we can kind of break it into half hour sections. And then definitely for ambiance, I'll throw in some like floating petals. But the flowers are so small that the little petals have to be small too. Classic Game Review says, what's the difference between digital art and actual art? Ugh, loaded question. Um, I guess technically nothing, but art is in the eye of the beholder, so it's perceived and it's subjective. But for me, when I'm looking at the difference between digital and traditional art, I think it's the process matters to me. So seeing a finished AI piece, in my personal preference, I would say it's less art than let's say an oil painter who completes his work. Obviously, this is something that mo a lot of people disagree with me on, but I believe that the artist intent and the process should be included on some level of thinking in terms of what and how we define art. Um, I think a lot of modern day art critics would say the shock value alone could be art itself. That's why the banana taped to the wall Obviously, nothing about the banana, the tape, the time spent, um, literally nothing about it besides who the artist is and the shock value. So if that alone can be art, I mean, almost I mean, anything can be art. Literally anything can be art. Uh, but I think if we're going to actually start putting uh, like bars on it, so like how low is your standard? How high is your standard? And does your taste get involved with it? So for me, is the banana tape to a wall art? Technically, do I consider it great art? 
absolutely not. Absolutely not. And like people can say it's the best thing that's ever happened. Fine. Uh, everything's opinion based in art world anyway. So I disagree with you. <laughs> um, so when it comes to digital versus what was it? Uh, actual art. I mean, actual art can be anything. So I guess the answer would be nothing. But I think digital, the only thing of why people see it as quote unquote less than is because there's way more shortcuts. But then some would argue that that doesn't matter if the end result is the, the goal. But then I always say, well, the journey should be part of that goal for the destination. Maybe not. Maybe it doesn't matter to you at all. But I think that's the great part about art is that it's all uh, relative. So like everyone's going to have a different opinion of what is great art versus what's not great art. Like for me, I'm, I really don't like pop art. And I know Andy Warhol is seen as one of the best artists ever. And yeah, I can appreciate what he did for the time period for sure. But um, is it my like favorite? Is my taste level? Absolutely not. Okay, I'm going to call this done. And we're going to start looking at what you guys did. So if you want to start taking pictures of your hair studies and submitting them onto the Discord group, I'll be pulling them up on to do this Discord right here. Huh? Oh, there's a lot of you. Oh, yes. <laughs> and uh, I like that some of you are already doing it, but if you want to post something that you have a comment on, on what you did, on what you liked, what you didn't like, what you improved upon, what you felt uh, didn't work, uh, that would be great. All right, so I'll give you guys like another minute or two to submit that. Uh, let's see here. Erica says Annie Steg Gerard is going to be there too. Oh yeah, I I love Annie. Uh, every time I see her, it's we're, we always have a good conversation with one another, and she's usually recommending good horror movies for me to watch. Surprisingly, uh, she comes across like she would be this fantasy only type artist, or maybe likes more softer, flowy things. Um, or a film that has more of a, I don't know, luxurious love drama in it. But she likes horror. And sometimes she likes like campy horror, <laughs> surprisingly. So every time I see her, I'm like, uh, what new like campy horror movie do you recommend? So yeah, I'm very excited to see Annie. Okay. So I'm going to start pulling them up. So I guess, yeah, this is my final study. Here it is. Uh, I think I messed up with the proportions on the face just a little bit. Her eyes too high. I think some of her hair got pushed inward a bit. And I think I made the stringiness in the front a bit too bold. Uh, but besides that, I actually had fun with this one. I kind of liked the result of it. And yeah, I, I felt like this was a fun little hair study. So let me, I'm going to switch this over. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how did that feel for you guys? I mean, I know for some of you that maybe aren't used to working uh, with hair or with facial features or uh, on people in general, this might have been quite challenging. So I'm going to open them up one by one. iOS camera off. Thank you. There we go. Okay, so going through one by one, and you know what? I might actually pull the reference on the left side, or I guess you guys can see it on the, the screen there. So this is from uh, Kindor. Uh, so they are the ones that had to leave early. So when I'm looking at this, you know what? I think I will also pull the reference on the PSD so I can see it. I'm gonna grab my Cintiq pen so I can do some type of a paint over if necessary. Let's get this out of the way. Okay, so looking at Candor's, uh, I would say the head tilt is definitely a little far back, or if anything, her shoulder is too far forward. Uh, I always talk about, oops, where's my layers? Where, oh my gosh, did it close my layers? It did. And I think those are the type of relations where 
I think as you get better at looking at the areas around the subject matter, you'll get better at drawing the subject matter itself. And I think that's something that I see. Um, and it, it, I think that'll help you everywhere as well. I definitely think you were hiding a little too much of the hair in front of the eyes, which I kind of like that it created this sliver uh, that is like a peekaboo to see the eye. So I would have definitely added more of that as well. But you only had about 30 minutes, so this is definitely like a quick sketch. And um, either way, I'm glad that you were able to at least submit something. So thank you, Candor. And then next we have Malian. And I always uh, feel bad because I mispronounce her name. Oh, wait, I'm going to have the comments up too. There we go. All right, so not perfect and not a full render, but this is all the energy I had to put into this. Might do another study, but have to take care of other stuff now. Uh, yeah, I think the biggest thing for me is everything just feels squished. I feel like if you took the image and kind of squished it from both sides. Um, the eye is definitely too open as well. Like even in your style, I think it's good to still, if the intention is for the character to be looking down. Right now, it almost looks like they're looking like straight ahead even. Like someone just said, hey you, and like they started to look up and that's kind of the impression I get from this. Um, I kind of like a lot of the stylization that you're doing with the hair though. I think like the, the face and the, the body feel a little off to me, but I think the hair, there's some fun stylization happening there. So I would explore that more. But I think maybe starting on a better shaped proportion head uh, might be the goal for you. So yeah, thank you for submitting. I love cats 09 uh, says calling this done so I don't overwork it. I definitely do that on my own as well, where I'm like, okay, Tim, don't push it too far where you kind of lose it. Um, in this example though, yeah, I kind of like of what I'm seeing here. I, I lose the shoulder completely. I think because there's no differentiating value uh, showing where one ends, one begins. And it almost looks like this is her chest line uh, where I, I think this is supposed to be more of her hair and then the chest line's like here. Uh, definitely some good play with the hair. I definitely can see it being shaped out and blocked out. I think you feel stronger where it's more shaped out than where it's more stringy. I think that's something to take note of and what to do with that. So then maybe create more of those shapes within the stringiness and that might help you because right now it feels very just loose where you can see even with the hair here, it kind of bends and moves even throughout the line going down. Uh, more of a suggestion, but uh, still, good job. Uh, next one is from the, the Snout 21, I believe. <laughs> and they said, I got lost in the values and ended up like this. I need more practice. I am Sergio on YouTube. Oh, Sergio. Okay. <laughs> Let me move these out of the way. So I think for yours, yes. I would say the values definitely get lost here. I can't really tell what's going on. And I think part of it might be more blocking in your shapes first and then filling it in with value because a lot of the pockets of negative space m make it read very strange. And I think it's because this hair is being pulled from this side and I can't really tell what's happening. So yeah, I would block out the shapes more and then fill it in entirely. I think if I was uh, doing this over, I would fill in this kind of entirely first and then I would use my eraser tool and then I would start removing some of the value and that way you can at least see where you're going more and then definitely in the front of the face try to have more of that hair coming off the head first it's very rare that the hair is going to lie like perfectly flat on a scalp like this uh, unless it's like wet or super super matted so I would definitely play with having some of the hair go off of the head first all right, and thank you for submitting. Uh, Eric submitted these. I like the little doodles on the side. I thought there would be more pictures, so I made the person a little small, and then I got done too fast and ended up doodling. I did darken. I did darkening and lightening. Not perfect, but I like it. Also, I barely do digital art of this kind by Jens. So. 
Yeah, I think the values on her skin are a little inconsistent for me. I think especially here. Uh, I like the idea of her skin being a neutral matte tone, but I think I would push that everywhere. And if you want to lighten up some of where the highlight is, uh, like on her shoulder, you can kind of push some of that. And then definitely on her collarbone and her the upper part of her chest. Uh, the hair, I feel like the highlights are a little too dense and thick for me, especially on the strands of hair here. This feels uh, almost like a camera effect, like a lens flare, because it's so big and bright. Uh, usually when hair gets so thin, like in front of her face, you won't see a clear shape of highlights as much as you would like on a strand of hair being pulled back with like a clump of hair. And I think that's where you would see more of the highlight. Um, yeah, so I would say those were my biggest critiques and definitely with uh, the values. So yeah, thank you for submitting, Jens. Uh, Krina Pullman. Ooh, oh, this is very fun. I'm going to just flip it, though, for consistency's sake. Says, long time, no such detailed pencil sketch for me. Usually I have to switch to ink line art after a few scribbles. Uh, yeah, I kind of like this. I, I feel like your style definitely reads through this. I think my only challenge for you is to play more with value. Because right now the hair is just con one consistent like mid-tone value. And then the skin obviously has no value because it's a negative space, like a almost like a Tetsuya Nomura rendering of a face, which is fun. But I think uh, if you want to push it even further, I would definitely play with areas of the hair that are slightly darker and then areas that are lighter because it's so consistent everywhere. It kind of loses uh, a point of interest. But I like the style that you have for the face. It's a very fun style. Like I'd like to see what your other characters look like. So good job. Uh, next is from Wishy. Let me move this over. And Wishy said, I don't know if it's just me, but I've been staring at this so long it's starting to look somehow sexual. Ah, um, maybe. I think whenever you have a female's mouth open, I think like a pout is acceptable, but as soon as it becomes a little more open than that, it does become more suggestive looking. So yes, I kind of see what you're saying. And I think it because it almost looks like it's her tongue uh, when this is supposed to be more a lip. I think if you pulled the lip back and made this a consistent value, I think it would read less suggestive. Um, in terms of the hair though, it's kind of fun and I like how you're using the negative space of the strands in front of it. I think my challenge to you would be pulling more of that darker value and keeping it more matte in some areas. Because I think the contrast of having like the stringy highlights against more of the, like larger chunks of value can actually read very, very well. So yeah, I would push some of this more in like blocks of value and then let that stringiness really breathe right there. And then underneath it, I would punch it a little bit darker and go that route. And I think the skin, if you're gonna start rendering some of the skin with areas that are darker, I would either go full stylized with it, or I would keep it consistent, kind of like what I was trying to do when the skin had at least a very, very mild value um, everywhere. And then that is like the basis to build off of. So yeah, thank you for submitting. Man, there's a lot of you guys today. I thought we just have like a handful. All right, next is the wonderful Tijel. Let's see. Very nice of you to be working on blue paper. All right, I'm just kidding. He says, this is mine. I love drawing the flow of the hair. I had a blast. Obviously, you did it in my style. Yeah, I mean, your style definitely reads very well here. I think, actually, it's very strong in the front of the face where it almost has this stained glass um, effect for me. It has this very characterized styling of hair, and I like the inner workings that you do with the lines in the hair. I think it's actually very strong with the stringiness. Um, yeah, I can see you having fun with the braids down here. 
Yeah, I'll see this is pretty I think the only one that stands out to me that I don't really care for is this one. But I think it's because it, the other ones have such this fun inner line working, like here and here, that this one just feels like you forgot to shade it <laughs> compared to the rest. I would actually just take that one out. Uh, I know it's in the reference, but I, I think that's the only one that I find a little distracting. Uh, but yeah, in terms of the face and everything, the, I mean, definitely, I can definitely read your style on this. I think just in proportions, I think maybe the bun doesn't read really like a high bun here as much. I think I would just push it up a bit more and that might even help with the positioning of the lower bun because I feel like this one's drooping almost like it has a weight and it's like falling back the head or back down the head. I think putting the smaller bun here and then the higher bun having a little bit more of that arch. But besides that digital, this is great. Yeah, nice style. I think the proportions are just a little strange. Uh, I think because it almost looks like her, like she's pulling her neck forward or pushing her neck forward. I think bringing it back, and I think maybe flattening out some of that line here, and then having that neck almost be more down. Because um, right now it does feel like she is pushing her neck quite a bit forward, almost like she got punched in the stomach and it's like a <gasps> reaction. Um, but besides that, yeah, great stuff. Good job, Tizzle. Ningo, or Ningo, Ningyo, uh, submitted this one. Love the flow of the hair. Uh, so on this, I really like that you play with line variation and with width, where some of the chunks of hair are like grouped really large, and then some are obviously smaller, like in the front of the face. But I think them being next to each other, once again, kind of gives me that stained glass appeal look. And it's pretty fun. I think the only areas that I would really comment on with the face, I actually really like the eyes and the nose. It does remind me of like the old concept art for Final Fantasy games. The mouth reads very strange to me though. I, I like I said, love what's going on here, but then this mouth, I know she has a slightly, it, it's like slightly parted and from the side view, it almost creates these angles, but I think the way that you kind of over exaggerated them makes it feel almost like she has a beak mouth, like there's a little triangle that's pointing downward in front of her lip. So I think literally I would just get rid of that. I think I would pull this down. And I think I would pull her mouth forward a bit more too. I like that and then something like that so it looks a little more like a natural even in the style that you're going for which I, I do like the style but you know I'm making it fit that more it also looks like their neck is very 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 small I think pulling back her back shoulder would help like like really far back because even in the reference you see how her shoulder is further back than the hair so even in whatever style you're doing, I still would be aware of proportions because right now it looks like a really big head on a small um, body. But I, I really like the way that you render faces. Or maybe not render them, but I mean uh, proportionally rend or proportionally add the lines to them. I think it's a clean style. But I think, yeah, the lower half I would just work on. So yeah, thank you for submitting. Dan Spaghetti. <laughs> Ah, this is definitely more of like the realism approach. Very soft. Uh, I think, yeah, my biggest critique on it, I mean, I actually like the values you have right now. They're very mid values, which I like. I like when artists play with mid values a lot. I think for me, it's just sharpening some areas, like adding some points of contrast and interest. So on this one, yeah, I definitely think making some of the hair darker to contrast the skin, which would be lighter in tone. And then on the face, I'd just be a little... Were, I, would, I would push back how heavy the line is. Um, I think actually having a smaller line can make it read uh, more clearly to the viewer. So 
and pulling it back. And then, yeah, I definitely think going way darker on some of the areas and then sharpening up some of the edge so it just gives some clarity. Because, like, I didn't even know that this was a pony or a braid that comes into a, a band here. But yeah, I feel like this is the a really great foundation to work on. I think just continue on from this. Man, there were a lot of you guys that joined me today. I had no idea. All right, next up is uh, Barbara. Oh, this is lovely. Uh, and you said, not the best work I've ever done, but I think it's decent. Uh, yeah, I think for a study, this is great. Um, yeah, I definitely think you had more fun where you can group hair. I definitely think, because I'm not someone that draws a lot of stringy strand hair, unless if it's like spaghetti hair. Um, so I, I can kind of feel you drawing it, not exactly sure knowing how to render it. Because like I can see you wanting to add thicker lines to this, because that was the same way with mine, and like not really knowing exactly how to do that. But when it comes to, like I love what you did on the top of the hair, how it, some lines kind of fade and break into one another, and you see that negative space uh, contrast the uh, mid-tone values that you have going on throughout. So yeah, and like I've seen your work, so I know you're very strong with hair, and I think uh, this is where I think you shine the brightest here. And I think the stringiness, it's something that I don't think you need to add in in your own pieces, but I think making that decision either way of, okay, I'm going to either make them light and kind of fading into the background like I do with the top, or I go more bold with them and add more of like these harsh lines. So right now it's kind of giving me in between the two, and I think just pushing or um, pulling one way or the other would help out. Yeah, and I like how you blocked in a lot of the values, and I think I would have blocked it in even more, like right on the face. I made this a bit darker too, just to kind of show where that light source is coming from, and a lot of under her cheek would be in shadow still. So yeah, as always, you're, you do such a good job, Barbara. Uh, let's see, next up, Madame Racine. Ooh, well, this is fun. This definitely has a style of its own. Um, I like how the strings aren't just like a flow, that you really did pull how hair can kind of have its own personality from uh, the scalp to the tip. So I like seeing that. I like definitely the exaggeration of the double Bob bow or a double bob bun. Um, let's see here. I think the values on her skin are a little they're they're good, but I think making it a little easier to understand where the shadow starts and begins. I think you have it in some areas, but I think the kind of like how Barb was doing it. I think showing that under this cheek it would be more in shadow, and then honestly most of this face would have that consistent value even down the neck until like right there. So I think sometimes softening up shadows can actually help create a better illusion of realism. I mean, obviously you're doing your style and I like how you kind of blocked it out with these larger kind of strokes of, it almost looks like charcoal. This could be pencil, but I see charcoal. And I like how you're really punching the values to differentiate the light, lighter values from the darker ones. So that, that's a great job. Yeah. yeah, this is pretty nice. I think also, because I know this is more of your style, but I think this line here, which is supposed to separate obviously her chest from her arm, I think it going this direction is a little confusing. I definitely would pull it more straight down. I know it's kind of a small nitpick, but it's kind of giving me the illusion that her arm's like, gonna squish in smaller and just that little adjustment can give the illusion then that her arm's going straight down all right thank you for submitting oh my gosh there were so many of you today all right and then oh i think we're done yeah corinna is that from a different yes oh you're saying that would render like that usually so this is 
how they usually would render. Actually, it's kind of funny how similar the, the positioning of the head is. Yeah, this is a really fun style. So keep at it with that. I like that. It almost has like a like a tattoo or like a ancient um, Eastern looking render style to it, which is really fun. Okay, that is, let me double check here. That is all we have for today. So thank you guys so much for coming to this live stream. Uh, like I said at the beginning, we do these every, uh, oh my gosh, been talking so long. Here we go. We do these every Wednesday. Nope, that's not right either. Thank you for coming to these weekly Wednesday live streams. We do these every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Central Time. There we go. And next week, we're going to be doing three studies on short hair. So we'll probably be taking a tackle at... Uh, hair that's like maybe a little longer than mine even or maybe even a little shorter and then showing different ways to render that so if you want to come and continue our hair studies that is what we'll be doing next week as always thank you so much for coming to these i love talking with you guys and hearing your conversations on uh not only what we're drawing but then like ai generated art or new entertainment that's um in the current market so love having these discussions with you and then next week we'll be bringing josh back for those of you who missed josh <laughs> okay and lastly oh yes hello oscar yes a little late <laughs> that's okay though um just says ha funny that one strand did actually really annoy me oh yes we're talking about the work uh yes thank you everyone for submitting i didn't realize how many of there were uh following along with me okay i'm gonna end it there thank you guys so 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 much and hopefully we'll see you next week Okay, take care, take care, take care, take care, bye. Okay, bye.